Hey everybody. Uh, Wednesday we had visitors over all day. And um, Thursday we had thunderstorms with lightning um, yesterday. So I didn't get out or do any video. Um, so I wanted to show you the updates here. Our uh, garden is growing a lot. The tomatoes, although they don't look very pretty, I don't know why, they're disgusting looking. All of the tomatoes that are ripe are really ugly. All of them. And I'm not exactly sure what's the reason. Um, something knocked over a cabbage. Actually, something knocked over a couple cabbages here. And ate. Oh, okay. We have a problem. We had something in the garden last night. I think we have deer or something. Because something destroyed uh, one cabbage plant and ate half of another cabbage. I was just about to show you how good the cabbages are looking. Now there's another one that's been half eaten. But yeah, we're not going to have any cabbage because something, there's another one full of holes. I've never experienced this before. I don't know what's doing this. But our cabbages are growing nicely, but they're really being devoured by something terribly. Um, Melanie picked a mess of tomatoes the other day. So there's sporadic tomatoes here and there throughout. Oh, there's, there's a problem. There's a chipmunk who isn't even afraid of me going through and helping himself to whatever he wants. Um, and that's a problem. That's probably part of what's destroying our garden. He doesn't even, he's about six feet away from me. And he's not concerned at all about my presence. This is a problem. And I don't know what to do about it because there's so many. And see, he's harvesting tomatoes on his own. And the problem with these critters is that they will pick one off, eat part of it, and then go and pick off another, eat part of it, and just keep destroying the entire garden. And there's nothing I can do because I can't be out here 24-7. Electric fence doesn't go low enough for these critters. I just don't know what to do. Um, there he runs off. So he'll go and he'll destroy something else now in a few minutes. And this is what they do. Anyway, that's a problem. So it's really, really rough here to try to keep a garden because everything's trying to eat it on you. So um, there's a mess of tomatoes that are ripening. All right, we've got quite a few. Now our plants are dwarfed, but I think it's the heat was miserable this year. Uh, it's We have heat and death warnings today. Um, I keep getting every five minutes, it's annoying, but every five, ten minutes I keep getting a warning on my cell phone. The heat index is going to be deadly today. The peas are end of life, and um, I'm going to pick what's... Um, what's overripe and those will be seeds for the next planting which I will possibly even try to do later um, in another area but the peas are pretty much overdone I'm gonna pick them and see if the plants might try to revive and try to grow there's the um, cucumbers and vine plants are finally starting to grow and spread out beautifully the pumpkins are huge, but there is something killing the leaves. I don't know why. Oh yeah, I see it. It's powdery mildew has invaded. And um, that is a killer in New York. New York is a harsh, harsh climate. A lot of people think that I don't know how to garden, but I grew up gardening. We had a garden four times this large when I grew up. But we didn't have all the, um, the powdery mildew and the chipmunks and the squirrels and the rodents and the um, beetles eating stuff and the vine borer beetles cutting things off of the base. We had tomato worms and we had potato bugs that I can remember. And those were easy to deal with. So anyway, we've got summer squash that we're going to have to harvest. It looks small on camera, but that's quite a huge, huge plant. Uh, we've had a couple meals out of that already. And the beans are way uh, beyond ready. Some are seed beans and others we're going to pick and possibly depending on how many we might can some. And we've got some pickles. So we've got actual pickles. Where are they now? I moved a vine off the path. People were walking on it. There's a pickle. Can you see them? Down under there. There's a couple of them. Oh, there's one. These are, I think are actual pickles because they're already stopped um, growing. So. I think that's that's what you get right there. So we've got a ton of beans, ton of peas. 
We've got some pickles that are ready to go. Lots and lots of tomatoes. And uh, the rutabagas are definitely ready for harvest. Look at the humidity is so high, my camera's steaming up. Uh, we have spinach, we have new lettuce growing, and we've got onions. I mean, really, it's looking good this year. It is looking really good this year. Corn is still a little stunted. Uh, I'm still working on that and trying to figure that out. Melanie has some ginger right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's ginger starting to peak up. So that was an experiment. The uh, raspberries are bushing out huge. So that's going to be really nice next year. The grapes have been decimated and absolutely destroyed. I hope they can recover. But um, while I was gone, the beetles have taken over and absolutely comp just, just wiped out my grapes. There's nothing left. Um, and the trap is not doing its job. I can smell the trap, but there's nothing there. Oh, weird. I don't know what this is, and I've never seen such a thing in my life, guys. What is that? Is that beneficial? Or is that dangerous? Actually, it looks like a grasshopper in the face. I have no idea what such a thing is. Anyway, tell me what that is, guys. Now, these guys, I'm going to have to go around with a can and start picking off manually again, because the trap isn't working. There's so many... It's terrible. It's just, they're, they're being wiped out totally. Alright, well, I'm going to start harvesting the, uh, the garden plants right now. And uh, talk to you guys later. Here actually is our best tomato plant in the entire property, which grew up um, on its own. And Melanie put a framework around it before we left. And that's a beautiful plant now. And here's a papaya. This is where the chickens had been. Here's a papaya plant that Melanie recognizes, and we're going to let it grow on its own now and pr transplant it to a pot later and try to keep it. That grew from a seed that we had thrown out to the chickens. And there's something that I've done an article on before that you guys will be very, uh, will be very good for you to pay attention to and know. This is called broadleaf plantain, wild plantain and not the banana type thing that you're familiar with from the grocery store. And this is a very good medicinal plant. And uh, if you have any skin problems, uh, for example, let's say you get a bug bite or a rash, you chew the leaf and the saliva in your mouth uh, activates an enzyme in the plant and turns it into a medicine. And then you put it on your skin and put a bandage over it and the poison from a bite will be sucked out and any rash you have or, or uh, many skin problems will be healed by this plant. It's also a good um, form of like salad. You can use it in salad. And the seeds can be used in cereal but they um, become sort of slimy when water is applied. Hi guys. I'm uh, harvesting the beans and weeding out the garden as I go. Oh, wow. Look at that. Um, advantage of the type of gardening we're doing is the weeds come out relatively easy. Now, some of these beans went bad. They were, I think, overripe. I'm not sure. Um, they should have been harvested before we left. Some of them were ripe. So what we've got here is going to be a mixture of seed beans and fresh eating beans. See, a lot of them went rubbery. I don't know why, what happened when we were gone. I think it was too dry for a while there. I'm just dropping them off, the rubbery dead ones. Um, and some are fresh and good. Anyway... A lot of people criticized my dense planting methods, but a lot of people are not very well informed on the square foot garden method. And I would advise that you study that because they do say that you can plant more intensively and more densely than people are familiar with and accustomed to. And 
I can sit here. Now I'm not sitting down in the dirt like I normally would because it's been raining heavily. It's all mud. But I can sit here and harvest all of the beans uh, with no problem from one row, one side of the row. Now Melanie would have to go on the other side. But this is a four foot wide garden here. I don't think there's any seeds in them. No, they're all empty. See, some of these went dry and died at one point. But anyway, I can harvest all the beans from one side as they say in the books. I do have the square foot garden book, by the way. I've read it. And uh, I was very impressed. And I planted much more densely than most people would even consider or imagine. And yes, it works. Now, you have to put back nutrients into the soil. And you'll see, watch how many beans I pull off this single plant. But with the mulch and the leaves that I throw down, you are adding nutrients into the soil. So, um, you get a really nice harvest. Although it's very dense planting. I'll show you when I'm done with this one plant how many beans I got off of it. So the denser planting method just gives you a lot more harvest in a smaller plot. So people can, in their backyards, feed their family. And that's what the guy teaches in the square foot gardening method. And I know he travels the, the world giving demonstrations. So there's one plant. That's not bad. That's a good, good, uh, very extreme good example though. But there's a lot of beans out here to be picked. But that's the dense planting. It's good. Now, if it hadn't been such a brutally hot summer, and we have actual death warnings today, I think I mentioned that earlier, they're warning people to stay indoors, and if you're sensitive to heat, then uh, you should go to an air-conditioned place, because uh, it's going to be brutally hot and humid today. But anyway, I would have, you know, if it hadn't been such a bad summer this year, like we've had since... May, since May we've had uh, 80 to 90, 100 degree temperatures cons constantly, which normally around here we have just about two to four weeks of it. And that's it. So uh, right now it's actually just getting hotter each day towards August. Well, it is August now, but I mean, it's just been getting hotter. So I would have had this garden a lot larger that was really going to expand this year, but I just can't handle the heat, so I'm sorry. And we were going to be putting away enough food to get through the entire year. And that was my hopes. But, uh, you know, Chris is a good help out here, but he can't run the rototiller. There's no way he can run a machine. And he doesn't mind the heat, though. But he can't run that tiller. That would hurt him bad. So, yeah, it just didn't happen. Uh, getting a nice bunch of beans, though. Right, hold on, when I finish this one uh, section here, I'll show you what what we got so far. And I'm almost done with the beans, and I got to get to the peas. Clean up the peas. Hopefully, they'll uh, once they realize that. I've stolen their fruit. Hopefully they'll start growing again. Bearing fruit. I hope they're not dead. But it's just been so hot. It's really hot for them. So I don't know if there's any hope for the peas. Alright, right now, let me come around. We got a nice amount of green beans in this big tub. So, not bad at all. Um, Pretty good harvest for now. Well, everybody, right now that's what I've got so far. A lot of beans. Uh, the peas, we've got the sugar snaps that went to seed I picked. Uh, well, they're going to be for seed now, for replanting. 
and the normal peas that are only fit for replanting now. There are some more growing on the vine. We have been eating these heavily all along because Melanie loves them. But while we were going away to Michigan, these all went um, to seed. I mean, how do you say that? They matured. Peppers are not doing well. Something is eating everything. We had 20, 30 pepper plants, and this is all I've got. Something is eating the peppers off the vine, even the hot chili peppers, which is odd. We've got two pickles. Um, the cucumbers plants grew slow, so that's all we got so far. There's a lot still coming. And we got summer squash. Obviously, this one is a behemoth and is not going to be very good. Um, this one's all warty, so he won't be very good for eating, uh, maybe in soups or something. But definitely this one is going to provide seed for next year. And these two are still young and soft and a lot of beans. So I did not get to get to the tomatoes yet because it's really, really hot. And uh, I have to go in and have a Gatorade because I my, my clothes are sopping wet from sweat. So um, we do have the heat warnings today. So I think that's going to be all my um, garden work for today until this evening. All right, what we've got is 90 degrees out and 70% humidity outdoors and 78 degrees in and 93% humidity indoors. So it's pretty uh, bad. I'm dripping. I'm sweating inside. I think I might have to run the air conditioner because um, I'm... It's bad. This is really bad. So uh, that's what we got so far. Hey, everybody. It's a scorcher out there. It is 95 out with 60% humidity. Well, 57. It was 60 a minute ago, oddly. 76 in at 80% humidity. And really hot. We have rain every day in the forecast for the next 10 days. But uh, we haven't had the pleasure of having that break today. So, um, 5 o'clock, quarter after 5 in the afternoon. And right now I'm just trying to beat the heat. Um, the sun has just cleared the meadow. It is getting later. It used to be 4.30. The sun cleared the meadow. Now it's about 5.30. Uh, 5, 5.30. Anyway, it's still 95 degrees out, and it's supposed to be a low of 75 tonight. So I um, hope to get out and do some more gardening tonight, which is the main thing going on. Chris has been out in the forest out in the way back out there. And he is doing a lot of work. Maybe I'll get out there and show you that later. And Melanie is working on setting up an outdoor kitchen for processing all of the vegetables that I'm harvesting. Right now I just want to get you something to see because we have been on the road the last two days and my computer has been glitching out on me like mad so I haven't been able to work. So um, let me get this up to you. And the uh, I know it's unusual for me to break up the day into two parts but let me get you something there to see see what's going on but today is garden harvest and uh, vegetable processing day we do hope to get a canning uh, th uh, system going on here Melanie has been reading the um, sorry the uh, canning and preserving book that somebody sent me a year or so ago uh, I think a year ago anyway Melanie sent me the or Melanie has been studying the book actually so have I uh, we've both been reading this and we do plan to start canning putting away our excess vegetables so let me get this up there and uh, I'll see you guys later when I get back out uh, my computer I was gonna upload a video my computer has rebooted and I think I see that I have some serious uh, dirt on my camera lens uh, my computer has rebooted for the second time today and that's why you see the black screen the computer is fully rebooting I don't know why I don't know what's going on but uh, even when I shut the lid of the laptop, which is supposed to go into hibernate mode, the computer still continues processing and bogging and hogging my internet bandwidth, downloading stuff, and then rebooting the system. So now I've got to wait five or ten minutes until the computer is actually usable, because Windows 10 is bloatware. So the process isn't as a little bit delayed, and this is what I'm dealing with all the time. Yep. I'm logged out, there was another installation, another automatic reboot, and I don't know what to do guys. I went into the system registry, as somebody told me, 
I did the edit and stopped the Windows updater. I went into the um, internet settings and I set it as dial-up networking and I am still getting automatic, up uh, automatic updates continuously. By the way, this saved me a ton of internet bandwidth. Um, Microsoft now allows your computer to send updates to other computers on the internet. When you have poor bandwidth like I do, you just can't handle it. So my, I was having severe problems with working on my computer at all. It just wasn't even useful. And um, hold on, there's a gnat in my eye. My computer and my internet weren't even usable for a while there, and I figured out that you can turn off this. It says, choose how updates are delivered, and it's supposed to be this great, wonderful thing, but do you want your computer sending information to other computers in the world? Do you want your computer getting software from other people's personal computers? Not me. So I found that and turned that off. 